Hello and welcome back to Pandem Presents. We are here with author Sherry Yarbo, an, an, an unstoppable author. <laughs> and um, this show is going to be airing on Monday. We're going to do we're doing a pre-recording. So if you have any questions, just please go ahead and comment, or you can um, also email us at April at pandamagazine.com. This is her book, Horrors, uh, a psychology of horrors, villains, survivors, and victims. So we're going to be going into the mind of serial killers. So it's going to be a very interesting show. So we want to welcome Sherry Yarbo. How are you doing today? Hello. Hello. Doing pretty good. <laughs> doing a lot better yeah. this over the weekend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you, you had a rough week. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, let's just dive right into it. So we're going to ask, the first question I've always, I always ask is, how are you thriving through the pandemic? How are you, how's it going for you? It was, it was a whole lot of things that happened um, since this pandemic started. Um, one, I'd, you know, you, you lose work and you lose income but uh, luckily, we got stuff that came in that helped us out with our business and uh, like with the SBA funding and mm -hmm. the PPP loans. So that helped yeah. us get through a little bit. Um, and then, of course, I had a, my stroke uh, mm -hmm. last year. And but those things that happened, those 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 hurdles we we're going through actually catapulted me to get this book done to say, yeah. hey, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what our future holds. We doesn't. We don't know how things are going to go. So why not go ahead and fulfill a dream yeah. of mine that I've always had? And wow. that's what I did. And that's what makes you unstoppable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let me. I had you. Okay. So tell us about your book. Well, with um, psychology of horror, villains, survivors, and victims. Um, what I did is I have a, I finished, finally finished my master's degree too. Thanks to oh, the congratulations. pandemic. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> and, but during that time, I, we studied a lot, you know, of course, when you're in, in psych, I did apply behavioral, behavioral science and I look at criminal, and I saw the criminal justice department. So I looked at all kinds of criminal, the criminal justice theories and um, crime theories. And, I was talking to my son one day and I was like, you know, because I, I was also in counseling, we had to write a, analyze a character, like our favorite mm -hmm. character. Um, mm -hmm. One time I analyzed Supernatural, other time I analyzed Clive Barker. So I analyzed these people. So I told my son, I said, you know, I, I was thinking about Jason the other day and you know what, he was more of a, he was a victim. Not only, not only really? was he a villain, he was also a victim. My son was like, "This too, mom. You should." You know, I was like, "I should write a book." He said, "Yeah, you should write a book." So, I decided to use my degree, and I mm -hmm. love movies. I mean, I love movies. We have, we probably got over two thousand movies. Oh, wow! Anywhere from Laserdisc, VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, 4K. I got it all. Well, wow. I figured I'm gonna use my degree. And my love for cinema and actually analyze these characters. And then also look at true life crimes that actually mimic that they mimic from the movies or the movies took from. So in my book, we not only do I analyze this character, we also will look at the I look at like some of the true stories of some mm -hmm. of the things that happened. I also look at not only that themes also. Mm -hmm, sometimes mm -hmm. I look at, you know, sometimes psychosis, people get have psychosis based on a, a an artifact or or place they lived in or, right. or or area. So 
and the, and the first book, I also look at some of those areas, some of those creatures. Like if you look at some creatures, like the predators, they still had a sight. Mm -hmm. They still had ways that they that they they thought and that they did, and there was a right. method to the madness. I look at those two, so we analyze all that, and I look at the survivors. Why did certain people become survivors when the other ones perished and they became victims? So. Yeah, yeah, that's fascinating because um, you know when you brought up Predator, it really, really um, Predator. When I was little, that was something that scared the crap out of me. <laughs> and the funny thing is, <laughs> I grew up with um, my grandmother had seven kids. She has uh, three boys. I mean, four boys, three girls. I think I got that right. <laughs> and um, so my uncles, all my uncles growing up had dreads. So it's kind of funny, like you you would think that seeing the dreads would be like nothing to me because my uncles, yeah. had, they have very long hair. I mean, beautiful dreads. And I, I, I'm i used to it. But for some reason, Predator used to scare the crap out of me. I know. You so like, <laughs> so. That, that was so funny in the, the second Predator. When yeah. they he, when the predator yeah. came to the the Rastafarians or the Jamaicans and they had the yeah. the it was funny the interaction between the two like because it's looking like <laughs> you got my hairstyle you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you know like for me for me it wasn't until they did I think it was Predator versus um, the Alien or oh that, that yeah alien thing. yeah. That was the first yeah. time I actually sat and like, I, I watched the first one and that's when I, you know, I, I was scared. But then I didn't watch it after that. None of the none of the other <laughs> colleagues in the room scared. But then I got when, all of my them all. You got, <laughs> but then when I, see, now, I kind of want to watch it now. But now <laughs> when I watch uh, the the Predator versus the Alien, I got like I actually felt for the Predator. And I, I like yes. I, I understood his story. I understood. And you like, can see now you understand the how they think. How they yes. the predators have they have a code they have how they yeah. they do things who they will kill who they was who who Ooh. impresses them even a, even a human can impress them right. and survive and so right. that's one of my survivors from predator yeah. versus alien you yeah. saw um, Sinai Lathan's character mm -hmm. survive and yeah. and become respected by the predators Better predator, so, predators yeah yeah, yeah that was, yeah. I, yeah, you, you, and then see, like Jason, I when I uh, I think my the first horror movie that I ever got a glimpse of, I didn't really, you know, when I was little, I didn't really watch, but was Freddy. And oh goodness, Freddy Krueger! I don't know what it was though, which is really weird with me. I had a, I had I had like compassion for Freddy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was. I had <laughs> compassion for, I don't know, my godfather's name was Freddie, so maybe that had nothing yeah. to do with it. But I just, yeah. like, he can't, there has to be a reason why he does this or, you know. Oh, man. I didn't yeah, see yeah, him of course like everybody else saw him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You read, you read my stuff, you see. You see. Yeah. I, I had to, um, I had to dig into, as you watch these movies, you have to dig into different, because some of them show the background, and they, and they did. Right. Um, yeah. Some some of these movies, like when when it comes to Michael Myers, mm -hmm. they have changed his backstory so many times that I had mm -hmm. to choose which backstory and which what was oh, I going to no. use. So yeah. I used only the first two movies uh, for Halloween for Michael Myers, oh, okay. and I, okay. I ignored all the rest of them. Yeah, um, because of, yeah. the same with Freddy. Freddy, they was consistent, but you also have the TV show. Yeah. That um, that was out, and they showed in the TV show. They showed um, the that he when he got arrested and the court mm -hmm. case and everything. So you saw a little bit, a little bit in the background. Yeah. But then I also when I do these things or when I analyze them, I look I look between the lines as well too. A lot of yeah. psychologists will look at uh, like they might say so and so like this like uh, let's say for instance. Uh, John Kramer would stall. Mm -hmm. The other psychologists, there, were, there was always the negative things. He was he was uh, a narcissist or something mm -hmm. negative about him. He wasn't. You got to look at look at what happened to him. Mm -hmm. Look at what he was doing. He wasn't trying to kill people just to kill them. He was killing people to get. In fact, he wasn't killing them. He was given wow. a choice to say, "Is your life 
worth something. You need to look at your life being worth some, uh, be a love life because yeah. you don't have it. You may not have it. You're throwing it away. And he gave them an out. Either they solve the puzzle and they get out and they live or, yeah. or they die, unfortunately. So if they don't want to take in consideration what they did wrong and, and take it, internalize it, he didn't, he felt they didn't deserve to live, you know? Wow. He so was, in a way was he was kind of lot, cleaning. He was cleaning. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, the same as, as Jason, um, mm -hmm. Jason was a victim. Those kids, mm -hmm. they, they teased him. They, mm -hmm. they killed him. You know, mm -hmm. you know, they threw him in, let him drown. He, they, they, they attempted to kill him. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. when obviously he escaped, he saw his mother kill all the, all the people. And then they right. saw somebody kill his mother. Right. So as a child, you, you, you've had no, nothing in your life, but to be ridiculed and hurt and teased and then tried to keep be killed. So, I mean, what are you, and you're a child, yeah. and you're a child with intellectual disabilities. So he, he didn't have the same thought pattern as a normal person. No. So that's the way, that's when I, when I'm doing these analysis, I'm looking at the whole, you take a person, you look at everything, not right. just the action they did. You look at the everything and what may have got them to that action. You know, I learned that with, because um, I'm in college too. Well, you, you got your MBA already. I'm, I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> but, You'll um, get there. I'm working on it. It's driving me nuts. But in my English, my professor had us do the movie Psycho and compare it mm -hmm. to something modern, a modern version of Psycho. And I had picked um, from Criminal Minds, um, it was called uh, something of destiny uh, reflections of destiny <laughs> was the episode I, I i should remember it right <laughs> but um that was the first time i actually looked at somebody who was a villain and had to analyze and then compare yeah. it to a modern day version one and it was it was fascinating that you really did see like i felt for norman bates i i, yeah. I felt for, like i don't feel like he really wanted to kill well, he didn't. In, in in Psycho, it was technically his, it was his mother, but it was him. But it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, but I so we can't, it. couldn't yeah. help it. Yeah. yeah. The Norman but Bates. What I'm going to do, when I do Psycho, mm -hmm. which I'm doing Norman Bates in uh, book two, yeah. which I'm working on book two now, I'm going to actually not use the first one. I'm going into Psycho 2. Psycho 2 shows it, shows him after the whole aftermath and everything oh, and, really? and it's giving you a lot of backstory on on norman and you can actually see norman's actual personality his characteristics and how he does things the first one not as much because you, you, you want that the story of that is mother and it just it was it was a little bit different the right. second one actually brings you a lot more into into norman bates uh. and when i do the tv version of uh, which is going to be volume three. Mm -hmm. I'll look at the TV show. Now you know the TV show. The TV show brought us Norman as a child, as a younger oh. teenager, a younger person with his mom still alive. Oh, see, I didn't see the TV so, show. Yeah, uh, I didn't watch it, but I wanted to watch it. It's it pretty good. <laughs> but I, I get, I get so excited. I mean, I have um, the second book. Mm -hmm. I'm going to. I'm not only just focusing on, and I got. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my my notes on my side. I have a whole oh, okay. list. Oh. <laughs> but um, I'm not only looking at the character, but I'm also looking at vampirism, lycanthropy, um, mystical arts. So we're looking at the witchcraft, hoodoo, voodoo. And we're looking yeah. at those films and the themes. And some of them, like when it comes to, to Dracula, for instance, vampir vampirism, mm. you look mm -hmm. at Dracula, we look, we have taken that the Bram Stoker's idea of Dracula and we've changed him over the times and it's been different things. So I'm looking at Dracula and Toad and I'm looking at um, the Bram Stoker's Dracula from 1992. There's so a movie. I'm going to do those. 
Did you, you, there's a movie, I'm sure you know this movie, Serpent in the Rainbow, I think it's called. Oh, yes, yes. That, that would be a very good one to analyze. That would be a very good one. Um, this, I got so many on list. Some of them, I, um, I'm get, I had to remove some so that I, I'll just put them in for another volume because yeah. it'll be just so many. Um, and I don't want to be, uh, I guess, repetitive sometime on some characters because some characters are, it's pretty much the same kind of background story yeah. or whatever. But in real life, you're going to get people that have the same issue. You, you might have 20 right. of them that are schizophrenics. And yeah. they're all going to have similar kind of backstory, but there's all, but there's going to be something, something that, that you have to focus on different with differently with each one. Which is, now, yeah. my father, he, um, he was a retired uh, police chief, and he also okay. worked for a mental hospital here in Dayton. Oh, and he wow. actually, he actually worked with the guy that they based, um. Kevin Wendell Crumb on glass. Oh, really? Um, well, not glass. It was it, not glass. Yeah. yeah, I guess he was on glass, but it was um, um, split. We, we first saw him in split, and then okay. we seen okay. him in yes. But he, oh, wow. they based his character, that character with the 27 uh, um, uh, identities, he was, in, he was in the mental ward here in, the, in Ohio. And my my father took care of him, so oh. my father has a lot of stories. Wow, he's going to give me some some good information too. But uh, yeah, he must have some good stories. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, um, off topic, not off topic, but <laughs> what I know a lot of the movies do come from actual serial killers. Even if, yeah. if they take it from like one, sometimes they take it from maybe a couple different ones. But I know yeah. even the Norman Bates character was based off of a serial killer in Wisconsin. Um, yep. I'll put it on yeah. that in my book. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's, yeah, that's something else that I had learned. I was like, wow. So it was pretty interesting. It's my first time really analyzing. So that's why your book is like really fascinating to me because I was like, that was kind of like diving deeper into that. So and I think, I, well, also, um, will help. Well, also, something that's my book will helps people is a lot of times. Some of these, like my, I have people come to me and say, I didn't, I never heard of that movie. I'm going to go take a look at it. Now, I've never thought it. about the yeah. character in that that way. Yeah, a lot of way, people yeah. didn't think about the characters in the way that I presented them to them. It and they said, Well, I'm going to watch the movie more. again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I kind of want to watch Predator now. <laughs> in a different life. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> Maybe I won't be scared. I shouldn't be scared with dreads. Like that was my whole life. Oh, but but there, there was something else. The predators. Yeah. Well, my uh, my uncle's faces didn't open up and eat you. So I know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the difference. Oh my god! So I see your passion with your books, but tell me more about just tell me more about the the passion behind it, like. How did you discover, like, this is your thing? You you have well, to do this. When I was, I think it was, I was in kindergarten. I had to be kindergarten. I wrote a little story, a little ghost story. Mm -hmm. And I remember a teacher called my mother and she said, um, uh, that, who, did you write this for her? You know, and my mother said, what are you talking about? I didn't write it. What are you talking about? So she gave, showed my mother the story. Mm -hmm. And my mother said, no, she wrote that. And the teacher couldn't believe that I wrote something that uh, advanced. Wow. I, I was always, um, I, I read early. I loved, mm -hmm. I've always loved reading. Um, I always loved writing. And wow. when I was 12, I, I attempted to write my first novel. Um, we ended up moving and I lost it. Um, I never mm. found it. And I couldn't get the story back. Um, so I've always loved English and literature and, and writing. And I've always attempted to write. Um, I've got so many unfinished novels sitting around here. Uh, that I've never got to you got to finish them. Yeah. So I, um, and I always get ideas. I have so many ideas in my head mm -hmm. and then I write them down and I, I, I start on a new idea and I don't finish, but I'm going to finish them. But what happened with this situation, 
I got, uh, I guess you could say I was, um, I got my stuck, you know, mm. I, I was stuck. my one book, I'm, I, I'm 18,000, almost 19,000 words in on a, about a 40,000 word book. I, I should have it done by now. Um, yeah. I'm like 10 chapters away from finishing another novel. And I just got, I just got stuck and, and I, I couldn't figure out how I wanted to go. And then this idea came in my head and, uh, I just got motivated. I got so motivated that I just start writing. But see, I started writing it a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and once again, I got derailed and I was, got mm-hmm. stuck. But when I was, um, when I was in the hospital and a nurse, she asked me, she said, um, so what do you do for a living? <laughs> and I told her, um, well, I mean, I, I, let me go back. I got derailed a lot of times. I have lupus as well. So I've got ah. the world a lot of times because I was in and out of the hospital. I've had to get a brain shunt um, and my mm. lumbar for so, some things that were going on. Uh, so I've been in and out the hospital um, off and on f- for years. Mm-hmm. So when I was in this last time with my stroke, when the lady, the nurse asked me, she said, what What do you do for a living? And I said, well, I just finished my, my, my master's degree. And I said, I'm working on a book. And you know what? I, I've been through so many different things health-wise that even having a stroke, I wasn't scared or anything. I just figured I'll get better like anything. Yeah. Um, but when she said that, that's the first time I broke down. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm not going to finish my book. I couldn't use my right, my right arm. I, mm. I, I couldn't speak hardly, so I couldn't mm. use a, like a thing to speak and tell my book, and uh, and it just it hit me then. I was like, I'm I'm not gonna be able to finish my book. Um, mm. I, I guess I have to go back a little bit further. To, to <laughs> reason, the reason why, mm-hmm. uh, like you said, well, I think I was it may be in my early 30s, and I was in the car. And I think because I've. So, we had so many deaths in the family during that time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was sitting there thinking, I said, you know what? When I die, I, 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 I don't mind being a mother. I, I, I love being a mother. I love being a wife. That's not a, I'm not saying that that's not a goal to be. Mm-hmm. But to me, I was sitting there like, when I die, what is going to be on my tombstones? What What are they going to say at my, at my obituary? Mm-hmm. And that's when I really got hit, hit, got in motivated about doing my um, my degree, and I decided I want to write a book. I want something. It didn't matter if I made money from it. What right. mattered is that I had a book on my library because I have a library in my house too. So oh, I'll, I'll collect right. a whole bunch of stuff. Too. <laughs> so I wanted on my on my bookshelf a book with my name that I wrote that I published, that my grandchildren could say, my grandma did that. My children mm-hmm. could say, my, my mom did that. So when like I said during the stroke, when she said that, I started breaking down because I thought that's one thing that I wanted to do that I may not be able to do. Right. Um, but I tell you what, I got so, I, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out of this. I, I had my, my stroke June 2nd. I went into rehab June seventh, and they told me you know, my my wedding anniversary is July fourth. So my husband was like, "Well, maybe it'll be out for the anniversary." Um, I was like, "No, I'm gonna be out for Father's Day." He was like, "Don't be worried about being out for Father's Day." <laughs> well, the um, I got out th- the three days before Father's Day, wow. and they said they couldn't believe the strides out because when they asked me to do something. I pushed myself to do it. I, when nobody else was in the room, I was sitting there saying, I got to move this hand. You got to move this hand. We got to do this and that. And every time I made a stride, it was so happy. Like today I curled my hair and I was so happy because I could not curl my hair. I couldn't use my hand wow. um, about three, three months ago. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can write my books now using both hands. I couldn't yes. do that three or four months ago. I can only use my left hand. And you, wow. and you, when I got out the hospital, I started trying to type 
using my right, my left hand to try to finish my book. I finished my book in October and published it in October. And Amen. I was so happy. I was so happy. Amen. My uncle said, you know, it's because I thank you so much. Mm -hmm. he, he, my uncle said I was a very optimistic person. Yeah. He said, um, you've always been that way all your life. He said, and that's why you you accomplish more than with other people because you you always look at the bright side of things, not the mm -hmm. not the bad side. And that's the way right. I am. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And you know what's crazy? Uh or what's funny, uh, our passions are the same. For me, <laughs> what got me to writing is um I, I was, you know. Content, married, you know, no, no problems. Have my two point yeah. two point five kids, you know, my little doggy, <laughs> and, and I had two kids, you know, like, well, I, they're still alive. <laughs> so, <laughs> family, you know, <laughs> and um, I had this dream one night. I, I started getting this feeling like I should write a book, but I was kind of pushing it off because I'm like, I didn't. Now I used to write when I was in middle school, and I stopped. <laughs> And um, that's where I wrote, like, my first book, Endurance. It actually came, I wrote this book in middle school. I had a whole series. Oh I wrote notebooks in middle school. I, and like you, I lost all the notebooks. It's heartbreaking, <laughs> but I, I don't have not one. Yes. <laughs> and yes. I wish I did. I wrote, I wrote poems and everything in my notebooks, and I can't find not one of those. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of heartbreaking because I really wish I had them, yeah. the original, you know. <laughs> but um, what happened with me is I... I uh I had a dream one night that uh, I had I was like in my I was in my like my late eighties and I I was on my deathbed and I was dying and my life was flashing before my eyes and there's nothing wrong with being a mother being a wife being a homemaker that wasn't it did that didn't depress me it was nice and my yeah. kids grew up well and everything everything was fine what was heartbreaking is. It's like I didn't do anything to be remembered by. Yeah. I, you know, like nothing to say for my family to look back and say, okay, this, this is what, she, you know, this is what she did. This is what she was about. This was her thing. I was just, you know, the mom, the wife, and I made sure everybody else had their dream, but I didn't, yeah. I didn't accomplish my dream. And it made me so, it, the, the dying wasn't making me sad. It was a fact that, of that that it made me sad and and regretful yeah. and that's what woke me up and then after that i wrote i wrote endurance in like three weeks I, oh my I, goodness. <laughs> you couldn't stop me yeah i was on some <laughs> other level I, I was writing like ten thousand words a day you couldn't stop me I oh my goodness that's what i mean <laughs> yeah it, like it, i would i would have been happy if they said hey we'll hook you up to an iv yeah do that that way i don't have to stop writing <laughs> <laughs> put, it, put it with caffeine, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I can completely relate to, to what you're saying. It, it's just, it was the same for me. Like, I did, I realized that, it, and it, it wasn't even, and in my, it wasn't about money or fame or anything like that. Just yeah. doing your dream. That was my dream when I was in middle school to one day be a published author. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, said, I, thought, I, was like, I was like, what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a. I want to be an author. I want to be. I want to be yeah. working at home, and my kids they can come in and see me whenever. And I go back on a little studio in my little office and write. And that was, <laughs> that's just that was always my dream. Um, it's just Aww. that, you know. Now uh, it just feels good. To, it's, 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 I told my father it feels good to, to see my book. They said, yeah. "Well, I want to see. Hope you get successful." I said. I already feel successful. I'm going to switch these. Yeah. I don't know why these keep falling out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I said I already feel successful, though. Yeah. Um, so it's not, a, it's not a thing that I want to get success. I already feel that way. But yeah. I, I get in some of these, um, these forums, these groups, these writing groups, mm -hmm. and they think that being um, published through a publisher is like – that's what's um, important, yeah. And and if you're not, if you self-published or you're just it means you're not good enough. And and I'm like, I don't, I don't get where they. Where I've they read the say best that. books I've read have been from self-published authors. Yeah. So, so and, a lot of these now. movies, a lot of the movies that are out today are from self-published authors. 
So, um, and what happens is they self pub some self publish, and then when the the book took off, they went and they traditionally published. But yeah. um, it started off with a self published author. So, like I always tell people about um, when I started writing, and I knew nothing. I didn't know. I didn't, ha- and I didn't have anybody around me who knew or understood anything about writing and publishing or anything like that. So I was completely on my own. So um, I started researching J.K. Rowling and Stephanie Myers. And Mm -hmm. J.K. Rowling, she's in England, so they didn't have self-publishing at that time. I think they have it now, but they didn't have it back then when she was trying to get Harry Potter published. Um, And she got rejected and rejected and rejected. And the book just kept getting thicker and thicker and thicker. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's why I say rejection isn't always bad, you know, because Harry Potter is very is very detailed is it's very it's very very well written and it's because she got rejected so many times so it's okay to be rejected um but i was i looked at her life like what she had to sacrifice what she had to give up um the people who quit on her her husband you know like it was literally just her and her son and they were on welfare because of her passion like you you do make sacrifices for your passion so i could completely relate with that and then um with stephanie myers she she doesn't consider herself a self-published author, but she self-published her book and um, to get it out to book literary, literary, literary I have a speech impediment, so <laughs> literary <Understood>. agents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So she got her book out to them and it, it and it took a while. She kept sending and sending it. And they kept telling her, nobody wants to hear about vampires anymore. It's old. And I, I get it. I get it. You know, everybody's tired of the Dracula story, but you know, hers yeah. glittered. It was different, you know, but they didn't care. They figured it's the same old, same old. Well, vampire her glitter story. and her glitter and this glitter, her glitter and go somewhere else. Yeah. That kill, you know, it, and then she, if she got it out, it killed, it yeah. killed her. It killed, her fandom. You know what? It, it killed you know who it. made it? He who got her out for her? Kids. It was, yeah. uh, my daughter was like, oh, I started, when, when I started writing my book, I think they were just now coming out with um, Stephanie Myers. Um, they was just coming out oh, with Twilight. her movie. Yeah. yeah, Twilight, the first one. And my daughter was like, I remember seeing that book in the fifth grade and everybody was reading it. Everybody was going nuts over it. And yeah. she was now in high school. Let's say she was like in the seventh or eighth grade. She was in eighth grade in high school or seventh or eighth grade in high school. And that book yeah. was now becoming a movie. So that just tells you like, it was these kids and it was her self-published book that really got her to what she wanted. Yeah. And it was these kids that she probably didn't expect. She probably didn't expect these kids to get into it, but they did. Yeah. They loved it. They loved the glittering vampire. They love it's It's a good story. It's a fun story, you know, but yeah, my daughter, she loved it. She liked, I bought my daughter um, the books. She liked the first one. She said the second yeah. was horrible. The and, second uh, was horrible. Really? <laughs> They said the book was horrible. And then I watched the movie. My daughter that read the book, we all thought the movie was crap. And my daughter hated the movie. The one that watched, that read the book, she hated. But I have twins. Her twin sister liked Uh the movie. She didn't read the book. Yeah. But I was like, what is this crap? You know, I mean, just, (laughs) I mean, I guess it wasn't for us. It wasn't for a true uh, vampire. But they keep saying vampire stuff and werewolf stuff and blah blah, blah don't sell, but we still got movies like Dracula and Toad came out. Um, yeah, but all these vampire movies and vampire TV shows, right? Uh, the, right. the the um, this, this like looking at the uh, Vampire Diaries, right? The TV yeah. show, the book was horrible. I tried to read the book and I. It was horrible. I really, just, I just couldn't get to the book. Uh, they made the, the main character. She was not a likable character in the book. She was wow. Alina in the book was horrible. She was. Wow. She was. I don't even know why she was. She was like her Caroline. Caroline mm. character that was in TV show. They made that's how she was. In, this whole thing was weird. And yeah. then I found out um, the Sticky Stackhouse novels, which they made mm-hmm. uh, True Blood after. Obviously, copied off of the Vampire Diaries storyline because you know I thought they did. Yeah. And stuff in there, and and the Vampire Diaries storyline, no, they were angels. Uh, and um, the Sticky Stackhouse, there were fairies. 
Yeah. But I mean, it was like, I was like, these, I, I could, if I could get past the first, I mean, if I could, she would have made a, to me, your protagonist should not be that you hate him. Yeah. You want to be yeah. able to feel good about him, have some redeeming. I mean, your antagonist, right. you kind of can have someone you hate, but then you kind of love him if you yeah. do him right. Yeah, you but hate the love of you, you love to hate never him. Yeah. Hate your protagonist. Right. Uh, I mean, um, okay. That's why in the TV yeah. show they switched it. They switched oh. it. They didn't keep it like the book. Wow, I didn't so, know that. Yeah. See, I'm not into I tried the whole to read vampire it, thing. Be good. Yeah. 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 I'm not really like into some, the whole vampire thing. Some things. I mean, I like the underworld. I, I mean, I I I realize I own a lot of I own a lot of vampire stuff. I we watched the, the interview with the vampire because yeah. you know was part of my, part of my characters. Yeah. And um it, it, I mean I guess it was I, I mean of course it's not the same as we watched when you first watch it. I, I still think yeah. they did a good job on it. Yeah. But there's some other movies I watch and I'm like like Carrie for instance. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't get it. The, the, you was, know, that's the one with the bucket of blood. I liked it, but at the yeah. end, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and just like when I watch other stuff, I, I mean, I say for because I, I, I'm going to be doing every genre, so it's mm -hmm. I'm not just doing horror. It's going right. to be every genre, but I we I read watched uh, uh, Juice, Boys of the Hood, and mm -hmm. New Jack City. Excuse mm. my nose. Oh, okay, and. Uh, juice, juice can still stand the test of time. You can watch mm -hmm. Juice now and still, yeah, it's, it's excellent. Yeah. New Jack City. The only good actors that was on there were Chris Rock and Wesley Snipes. The rest yeah. of them were, hor were horrible. Mm -hmm. And the Boys in the Hood, you could clearly see it was in indie film. It didn't have the same emotion when I rewatched yeah. it. Yeah, so, yeah. This is like, odd. It's odd when you watch these things over again. You're like, oh. yeah. Why did I like? Yeah, Why did I like this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, let's cut to commercial real quick. Okay. Give ourselves a little one minute break and we'll be back. Okay. <laughs> we live in a world that glorifies wickedness. It's so easy to be bad. It's easy to make excuses for poor behavior as if no one is watching. But what if someone is watching? What if not just someone, but a whole invisible world of people, of judges, watching and observing? And they were able to see the destruction of our future based on our actions, our choices, would we continue to make the same poor choices if they were used against us? May Gordon has been violated repeatedly by our world, but through the eyes of the unseen, she is a hero. Despite all that is thrown at her, she never allows negative energy to remold her into its liking. She remains indestructible. Okay, and we're back. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds really good to could pick it up myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey. Yeah, that's my first book. I'm actually, um, I'm really, uh, uh, I'm working on revising a whole entire series, not changing it. But it's just, you know, I think it's, it's years old, but I love it. I love it. Yeah. it um, it's a fun story. It's a fun story, but it's the first book I ever wrote and published. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, I love it. I have fun with it. I have well, fun reading. Good. It sounds good. Yeah. The, reading the premise reading. sounds yeah. really good. Yeah. 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 It, um, it really comes down to where it's about spiritual warfare, mm -hmm. so in in, in everyday life. <laughs> yeah. So it was fun. <laughs> okay, so I have another question, and um, what is it? Oh yeah. So 
by reading these books, or reading your book, do you think it's going to help people become more educated about the people around them? Like, yeah, do see, you think they're going to be able to see more red flags and, and how More to- like, so what I did is, in the back of the book, I have um, DSM Mm, yeah. definitions. And what and inside there, it allows you to see what the psychologist actually uses to diagnose with that disorder. Yeah. Now, one of my reviewers, she gave me three stars because I had those definitions in there. And she said, regular people is not going to care to read these definitions. Um, but Everybody I know that's regular people say we want the definitions because that's how we want to. Yeah, I actually bought the DSM. I bought one of those, the, the, like the quick cheat sheets. Yeah. I bought one of those. And I don't even. Yes. Oh, no, I didn't. I had to take a psychology class. <laughs> that's it. But there's What's people the that, that don't mm-hmm. take psychology. They, they just, they want uh, yeah. to know how to, to figure out what's, what's causing these things. Um, the guy, the, the the reader's review that gave me the five star, mm-hmm. he gave it to me because I did have the definitions in there. Yeah, See, and this goes the fact that I can't make people happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna leave it the way it is, and mm-hmm. then, you know, book two is not gonna have those de- de- definitions because you you'll have book one, you can go back in right. and see the definitions. Um, <clears throat> it may have what will happen is if I talk about different. Um, diagnosis or a different disorder i'll have that mm-hmm. definition in the back but okay. in the first one i have all the definitions now I, I figured i said there's no reason to do it for every single one of the books because they're all in the series hopefully somebody will buy all the books yeah and i mean like the horror the horror volumes volume one two three boom that they're, they're all together then the next one's going to be thrillers so mm-hmm. you'll see those two the, the, of course thrillers will have the definitions again right but each genre, I'll do that because somebody may not like horror, but they like thriller, or they yeah. might like might like thriller, but they like fantasy. So each genre is going to be have that kind of same formula, but different characters, of course. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm also going to do special editions where some of do we're going to look at the um, 80s, the coming of age movies from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and beyond. Uh, black cinema from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, beyond, and then black de- directors, because black directors always have these themes, these psychological themes in their movies. Then I'll, I'll do that one too. So, you those know, will be who's, this who's a good one that I would, I, you probably do have a couple of his movies, um, M. Night Shalaman. Um, oh, yeah. Signs was a very good one. Yeah. But then he has others that I'm like, uh, like the village it is horrible. Oh, great! And then yeah, the village like, started off good, and yeah. then I so said it better not be what I think it is, and it was. Yeah. And I was mad. It was, yeah, but, yes, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was mad. <laughs> I was like, this is a waste of time of my this, life. <laughs> yeah, that one and uh, I forgot what that other one was. The one with uh, Mark Wahlberg. Mm-hmm. I think it was an alien invasion or something like that. That one too is so bad. I can't even remember. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, but it's like it starts out with a really, it's like he kind of drops the ball sometimes. That's what I think. Like so. with signs. I loved signs until the aliens died from water. I'm like, you're That's coming to Earth. Thing. You didn't know that it was water on Earth. Yeah. You didn't know yeah. right here. Yeah. That is. Yeah, I didn't really dive into that. Like, yeah, our our, our environment is mostly water. <laughs> they yeah, should have been able to, totally. to really get into our environment. <laughs> I so I guess there were some dumb aliens like we are. We we yeah. go somewhere and not pay the truth. So yeah. like that was that threw me off on that one. I loved it all the way till you got to that. Yeah, and how they yet. died. Yeah, I was like water, really? <laughs> the water? <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's true. It, yeah, but science science is probably the only one that I can say where at least at least I could sit through the whole. I, I like I enjoyed it. Yeah. I did enjoy it, you know. So, this, but uh, yeah, yeah. The, the yeah. sixth uh, sense. The sixth sense was good too. That yeah. was man. Every, when we watched that, I know nobody. We got goosebumps watching that movie back when it first came out, and it is scared. I mean, I guess if you're experienced 
ghosts like I had, like well, I probably sound crazy, but experienced ghosts in the real life. Yeah. Watching that movie, you're sitting there like, oh my God, looking around like <laughs> somebody yeah, watching yeah. it. It's feel like you're being watched. Yeah. But yeah, that that one really spooked me out. I really did. Yeah. And I think I, I'm, I might do, I don't think I'm doing Six Sense. I, I don't remember. You know, um, there's another movie, oh gosh, what's her name? She, it, and it was kind of like with Six Sense, but it was um like the ghost per- perspective. So I can't remember, but it was like oh, they're in the house. house. The others, oh man, the others. the others, yes. I gotta do the others. I need to do. The, oh my goodness, yes, that because was a good one. It was based off the, their children had a, a a health problem, an issue where they couldn't be in the sun because mm. they could die from the sun, and yeah. it was so crazy because it kept closing everything. and And I loved I, that right there. The way they did that movie mm-hmm. was. Excellent, because you yeah. you kept thinking that real people were the ghosts, yeah, and the ghosts were real, and it was yeah. so crazy at the end. Oh, I got to put the other. You. you got you gave me you gave me another good movie. Yep, yep. I got to put it in with my uh, put in my aspirations, my apparitions, and ghosts. Yeah, I'm gonna put others in. Yep. Yeah, I, <laughs> I a write lot a, to unpack with that. Oh, yeah, I put a lot of that in my books too. So it's. It's fun. It's just it's a different perspective. <laughs> yeah, one of one of my books that I'm um, this idea just came in my head. Well, it's been in my head over off and on for years. Um, writing a book about a, a sin eater, mm. and uh, she's from a long line of African sin eaters, and mm. they go in. And she goes and she goes into people that are, that are on the deathbed, um, death uh, people on the death row, and she takes in their sin. She takes it in to release them before they die, mm-hmm. and then she has to purify herself to get rid of the sin, mm-hmm. to get rid of all that. And it's look, I must look at the fact that she's pulling it in. How many of us pull in everybody's issue? We take it in to try to help, but we just. We, yeah. we we take in all this heartache and pain to try yeah. to help. Like we do as, as, as parents, we do it yeah. for our children. Yeah. You know, yeah. and um, we might do it for our parents that are mm-hmm. suffering. So uh, I think that's one reason why I came with the, why, why I came with that with her as the sin eater. Yeah. And it's just, I'll, I'll get to that one. Too. That, that's, no, <laughs> that's, that would be a good one. That would be interesting. Because um, I know they had a movie off of it, but an African that I like that I like that. That's unique. I want to get to it. Yeah, <laughs> that would be I'll good. I'll do it. One day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll so search your names. I'll research your names because what I um, like um, I was watching a uh, a TV show on Netflix. Well, I guess it was in my brain that you look at Vampire Diaries and. A lot of these other shows, and they're all usually a white cast, you know, mm-hmm, um, have yeah. one by a person. And I was like, well, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna write me a series or something that the the main characters are of African American descent, mm-hmm, well, they're mm-hmm. African descent, and they're the African, they're shapeshifters, but they're of African descent. So they, yeah, they have a white character, they have one white character, but they're going to be the the side people, the main yeah. people are, are, are going to be the the blacks. So I started working on that one too. And what I do is I go and I research the names uh, because I want the names to match wherever I say they're from. So yeah. when I did my 23andMe and I saw my my roots and I saw um, my my grandmother, my, my direct lineage is from, from um, my, my brain just, just got oh, my okay. background. My grandmother is Morocco. We got comes from oh, Morocco. Oh, really? Oh, Morocco. So That's, my I Morocco. looked. I looked at my those, mother. and I looked at um, the African, the Tanzanian, and I, yeah. I looked at all the the different African. I was like, oh, I want to take. I want to. So I looked at the the. I looked up the, like um, shapeshifters in different cultures, and mm-hmm. I saw the Tanzanian shapeshifters, and I was like, oh. So I went and found names for my characters that would legit, legitimately uh, African names. So that's why I try to make sure everything flows right. 
and and try to research as much as I can as I'm writing yeah. these characters. But, that's awesome. Yeah, that's another one. That's I'll awesome. get to yeah. it one day. <laughs> my da- my daughter's my youngest daughter's father. He's from Morocco. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm at the one guy. My my grandma, my grandmother had a, a little bit different look, and and uh, we have the Ethiopian back in there mm-hmm. somewhere too. So it's all, are it's all mix of all the yeah. all the African. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, my my uncles um all dread. They were when I was growing up, they were Rastafarian. So I <laughs> heard I learned a lot about Ethiopia. <laughs> yeah, growing up, yeah, I used to make my mom twist my hair to make it look like dreads. <laughs> I'll into it. <laughs> yeah, so another question I had is, have you ever come across somebody who gave you that serial killer vibes? They're um, not, probably not physically. I came across people that were, I don't know if it's serial killer, but narcissistic and abusive. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's like the, Becoming common, unfortunately, it's yeah. a lot. Yeah, the serial yeah. killer. The thing about it, it's about serial killers. Mm-hmm. You don't know the serial. Killer. I mean, they are the the nicest, sweetest, That's normal right. person you'll ever meet. And yeah. then they like Jeffrey Dahmer, but they. Even I was just about to say Jeffrey Dahmer. Up. Yeah, he was charming. Now my father said uh, several of the serial killers he he, he was with. He said they were the nicest people in the world. He said you would never, ever, ever know that a psychological disorder ever. Wow. He said they were on it, and you'll talk to them, and it's like your everyday person. So, wow. unfortunately, you those kind of people you don't get a vibe from. Yeah. That's not to do the things they do. It's yeah. the ones that are a little um, like the Freddy Krueger type people that yeah. are. Pedophiles or something like that. Yeah, you kind of figure those. You can yeah, see them obvious. all the way. Yeah. You know, you try to stay away from them. But yes, yeah, I mean, they wouldn't be successful killer, serial killers if they were obvious. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. And the, and the ones that are obvious are just they're not necessarily like the those psychopaths that are. Mm-hmm. So they're just somebody that they're like a sociopath that is crazy. This they're just. That's just the, they just what they do. Yeah. And they don't care that anybody knows they do it or doing it. So that's a little bit different. The ones that snatch kids off the street or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's different. Those yeah. are different. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I need to, I, I really want to go look and do you remember? I don't know how old you are, but um, oh. back, uh, <laughs> um, well, I'll be 50 on Saturday. Oh, okay. Okay. So on, um, I remember as a kid in Atlanta, the Atlanta child murders, and all those little black kids were getting um, kidnapped and murdered. Oh, uh, uh-huh. and it was a t- it was a lot of them. I think I'm about to go. I'm going to do some research on that one. I'm going to do some research on that one too. Um, but that was a scary time during that during that time. And I think it was the '80s. It was uh-huh. scary, wow. even though we were in Ohio. That was mm-hmm. Atlanta. It was yeah. still scary it's because still scary. you don't know they that travel. They, didn't, they hadn't called them. Yeah, and they mm-hmm. travel. So it was a scary, scary time. And it's Especially so sad if they're getting the recognized in an area or it's becoming, becoming yeah. too hot in one area. They're going to move to another state. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It was really sad. Yeah. I, I mm-hmm. just actually, I watch a lot of um, YouTubers that, it has two YouTubers that I watch a lot. One girl, she does makeup and makeup and murder or something mm-hmm. like that. And the other oh, yeah, guy, my watches that. <laughs> yeah, I like her. I love, I love her. I love her. Yeah, she's funny. And then another guy, yes. um, he was in the military. I can't see. I'm so bad. I, I forget their name. This is important. It'd be great for me to share his name so people could go to his channel. <laughs> He's a great guy. He wears flannel all the time and he talks about murder and, and, and you know, oh, you know my goodness. Cases. He talks about real life cases. Well, the last case, the last video I watched, she talked about this one case about this guy who he was having suffering from some back pain. There's some kind of pain in his mm-hmm. body. And he went to all these different doctors and they couldn't figure out what's wrong with him. His friends suggested going, and this is, in, this is in England, his friends suggested him going to, he says, well, maybe you should get someone to like to pray on you, pray, pray about it. Yeah. So they, they recommended this specific lady who had a prayer group. And it was like Christian Fellowship Prayer Group. Mm-hmm. And I think her name was like Mary or something like that. Well, he started going there. And, you know, it's the first night he had no pain after he 
while he while he was there in the prayer, he had yeah. no pain. So he went home and the pain came back. So he decided he's going to go to all the meetings. So he starts going to all the meetings. And eventually him and Mary started, um, I don't know, it, it's, it's rumored that they, there was an affair going on, but nobody really is really sure, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But they started staying late together, whatever. So people were assuming that maybe there was an affair going on. He's a married man. So... Yeah. His wife one day puts two and two together because she's like, he's always over there. He stays late. He like comes early and stays late. You know, <laughs> he's yeah. not really interested in anything going on at home. He just wants to be there all the time. So she's like, obviously he's having an affair with this Mary chick. She goes to, she goes over there and confronts Mary in the middle of their prayer service, com confronts Mary oh. and her husband saying, you guys are having an affair. Now she had her back. Her husband had his back to her. So when he stood up, um, Mary, who was at the front of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the congregation of the people, whatever, the prayer circle, yeah. she screamed. She looked at him and she screamed. And nobody understood why until, but what happened is she saw like a demonic face come out. Oh on my end. goodness. Yeah. So long story short, he ends up, they realize, okay, he has demons. And Mary's like, he needs to be exercised. So they call in, uh, you know, the, the Catholic priest or whatever. And, yeah. you know, they, they realize that, you know, they do their test. And like, yeah, he, he needs to be exercised. And they said he probably has like one or two demons. Oh, so my he goes, they do the exorcism. They pulled out something like, oh, gosh. I think they pulled out 37 demons. And oh my the the priest said there's still three left, but we're exhausted. He says, you're exhausted. We're exhausted. We're going to finish this tomorrow. That was their mistake. He went home and he murdered his wife. He was normal when oh. he left. Went home and it, it, the wife said that it's like they were in bed sleeping. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he just... The switch flipped, and he murdered his wife with his bare hands. He ripped off her face, and, and oh. they said, that, and then, and, and then, like he, how he was found is a neighbor saw him walking down the road talking about Satan, uh, and he was completely naked, covered in blood. And she called the police. Mm -hmm. Thank God she didn't go out there to talk to him. She called the police, and you know, so the police came in and got him, and then they went to the house and they found the wife. And it, it it's a true story, and. I was just like, oh, sad. wow, it's sad. It's very sad. They were so close, 37. So, and he said there was three more left. They just needed to get those three left, but they were so exhausted. And I was just like, they should have bound him up and went to sleep. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Something. Something. That's not, that's yeah. just, that was sad. But the it's, same when, um, with the people with the, when they have all them different, different <clears throat> identity, that's where, psychology and stuff when you look at some of those things the catholic may say that they the person is possessed and all those are demons inside of them right psychology you look at it and say those are those they're different personalities that need to be right. so both sides are saying we need to get them out right we got to get them to leave them alone Right, and sometimes that's why in my also was going. I was getting ready to go into parapsychology. There's not very many colleges around here that does it, and we none right. here. Uh, but my daughter didn't want me to do it because it's like you get some of you have to go get messing with demons and stuff. I said, well, I mean, but I'm this. I'm I'm one of those kind of people that I know that I know that I struggle between the both sides of it because mm -hmm. I've experienced both sides of it. I've, I've experienced some, some very supernatural things. Wow. Um, so I know that there's things that we can't explain in this earth. Yeah. That we yeah. don't have no power over those yeah. things. Um, so I do have my parapsychology book. And yes, I do use that when I'm now analyzing some characters um, because you got to look at sometimes it takes more than science. Sometimes mm -hmm. it takes more religion. Sometimes it takes them both coming together to, yeah. to get some things taken yeah. care of. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that. I definitely agree with that because it's a lot of things that science can't really explain or they just don't have all. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the spiritual side and it, it, it kind of comes together. But, um, yeah. yeah, I agree. That story, like, 
I was just like that poor woman, that poor woman. And they said at the end, he said never. They never really know if he really was having an affair with that woman. He may not have. I don't. Yeah. I I, I would like to believe that if you're leading a prayer a prayer circle, that that's not what you're doing. You know. <laughs> yeah. You know, I would like to believe that, but the truth is, mm, people are shady. <laughs> people, are, yeah. Yeah. So, but There's plenty yeah. of pastors have been caught doing that. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, they are they're getting busted left and right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I've seen yeah, I've seen a lot. It's sad. But I've seen a lot. But yeah, I well tell everybody where can they buy your book? If you go to uh books to read dot com backslash SL Yarbrough, it pulls up every link uh, um, where you can purchase the book. And I'm trying to work on getting it set up that you can buy from our website. But as of right now, we can't do that. But okay. my website is SL Yarbrough.com. Okay. If you want to go to the, the website. Okay. Okay. And then. But it's on everything. It's on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, uh, Apple Books, Google Play. So, 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 um, I think Kobo, so, so on a lot of different um, platforms. Okay, good, good, good. And you say so your those are your ebook platforms, and then you have the um, well, uh, ebook, the the books to read dot com, and it'll give all the all of the ebook platforms. All the e-books. Unfortunately, okay. I'm not on Amazon. Amazon, mm-hmm. I don't have an ebook on Amazon, but I have okay. it on Barnes and Nobles, Google Play, Apple Books, Kobo. Yeah. They all have the ebook, yeah. And then Amazon has the print copies, okay, along with Barnes and Nobles. Okay, so. okay, that's that is perfectly fine. I think we kind of give Amazon a little too much. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Amazon. And right now, the Amazon ebook, Amazon. Uh, the ebook sold sale for four ninety nine right now. Four ninety nine, good price, and it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> So um, how has the author challenge experience been for you so far? Just, oh, I love it. I know this is new uh, and we're we trying to get it together because I have never done this before. <laughs> yeah, I look forward to doing more of them. Uh, awesome. That's why you'll probably do more. Yes. But uh, yeah, I, I did I did enjoy uh, working with you and I think it was a good partnership. Yes. I love what you're doing. I think it's Thank an you. excellent thing what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I've it been... Helps us. Yeah, I think more of us authors just need to get together, like support each other. Yeah. Where you know, I don't believe in the competition in the on that level because I know everybody. You know, I used to do a whole breakdown about how many people is in this world, how many people, how many of those people read, and how many of those people read in the U.S. So they're U.S. readers. Like, we're, there's enough to share. You know, and just exactly. because one person buys my book doesn't mean they can't buy your book. You know. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like people will go in there and say mean things about yeah. somebody ask a question. They'll say, well, you just need to sell more books if you want more reviews. I'm like, they didn't ask that question. Yeah. Well, why do you have to be so mean? Yeah. Or your book, your this, this, and that, or it's not, that's not good. And and I was sitting there like, I don't know how people have to be so mean and tear people down. You know, yeah. that's, that's not right. It's, it's not right. It's We're not all right. out there trying to make it. Yeah, and then and it is a book. Somebody's gonna want to like, read your book. Yeah, yeah, but you no can't just has write a book. a book. Right, exactly. Yeah, some so. people think they write a book, they publish it, and this is going to automatically sell because on Amazon it doesn't no. work. That way. I know that now. No, I laugh. I laugh. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I've been. I I was promoting my book, um, two years before it actually got out there. And I tell people, so I was I tell telling everybody. I have my family members, and um, when I'm at the store, somebody asks them, I'll say something about my book. If they or say that, stay, like, say, talking about something that my book's about, like if they're talking about scary movies or horror yeah. or psychology, I say, hey, I wrote a book about so and so. But I don't, I don't, I don't spam people, but I no. do let them know what I'm talking. So, yeah, yeah. You, you'll never, nobody will know if you don't tell them. So, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that is very true. They're not going to know. It, and it's true, like a lot of uh, first-time authors, that's a mistake that they make. They think like, okay, I published it. You know, how come Oprah's yeah. not calling me? You know, how come, yeah. <laughs> how come I'm not on TV? I got it like, on Amazon. There's no sales, and you know. Yeah, but they yeah. yeah. Like I was real excited because I saw a sponsor ad for my book on Amazon. Mm-hmm. 
So I posted in little, my little groups, and then here come <clears throat> a couple of naysayers to come on there. Well, <clears throat> you had to pay for an ad to do that. I'm like, well, that, what difference does it make? If I'm happy that I see the ad is finally working, I actually see yeah. that my ad, yeah. why would that I not be matter. happy that I yeah. see the ad? Yeah. I mean, that doesn't make any you, sense. I mean, it's like they, they tear people down for no yeah. reason because their book's yeah. not doing anything. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and and it's unfortunate. Like we we need to cut because there's a lot of things that we can do. Uh, another project that we're starting is called the Jaili's Floating Library, and how it works uh. is basically you would send us a copy of your your uh, your printed copy of your book. Yeah, uh, we're gonna put a sticker in there that will lead people to your website and to um, you know information about you and things like that. Yeah. The purpose of the book is for the book to be stolen. That's the whole purpose. Yeah. We want it to travel. Yeah. We want it to float around. So we would send it like to like a barber shop or hair salon or anywhere where people oh, kind of nice. wait or sit around. Yeah. You know, even leaving it at a bus stop, whatever. Just it, the purpose of it is for someone to read it and then put it down for somebody else to read it and let it pass around. Yeah. What we would like people to do is there's going to be a QR code they um when they do the QR card, it's going to take them to our fan, our, the Jolly Floating Library fan page, and we want them to post a picture of them with the book, you know, and like <laughs> what state they're in, just it's just for fun. Yeah. So it's kind of like it, it kind of came from that dollar bill concept, you know, and they oh, I don't yeah. know if you see those dollar bills, like where's this dollar bill or whatever. So yeah. we said, why don't we do that? It's a floating library. It's free to it's free to um to people to read it. It generates yeah. a good word of mouth, you know, and if it's a good book, it's it's probably going to get stolen. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, the only downfall is if somebody doesn't pass it along, you know, but this is why I'm saying, yeah. I hope you, you always got that friend to come to your house and borrow your books and don't bring them back. So <laughs> yeah, my, my nephew, right? We, we're counting on people like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, when, when is, um, well, I guess you'll send me information about I'll send that information on it. Yeah. We're getting, we're trying to keep the, the you know, to get in, it's like $25. It's a, the price is low. You just need to send us a book and then um, yeah. we'll deal with the postage and everything else. But yeah, we want it to just, just go. Just, <laughs> just I don't know when the, my local library, I donated books to them. I'm just, I'm not sure when they're going to have it in there, but I'm, I'm doing a discussion uh, at the library on the 22nd. So oh, I'm going to do a, like a Q and a and a discussion. Yeah. about the book. So I was try, I've been trying to do as many events, live events as I can, as I can do. That's, That's what, what you got to do. Uh, That's what you so, do. So far I've sold about a hundred books now. Good. That's really good. Let's keep going. Yeah. And I get excited when I see one little book sale. I, I look yeah. on Amazon and it's there's, a, there's a book. I was like, oh, there's a book sale today. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> Yes. Well, I am glad that you were on our show and that you're part of the author challenge. So when this is posted, the people in the group, we need to get on there and get your book and start talking about it and sharing it on our yes. social media. So um, well, sharing is sharing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So this, I'm going to end the broadcast now. And okay. Just hang on. Okay. Next. Okay.